What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and today I want to share with you guys the different types of prisoners you're guaranteed to meet in prison first getting arrested, first getting into the jail and ultimately probably ending up going to prison. It was just recently we did a video called the different types of prisoners that are getting released from prison and I had a lot of fun putting that video together. It's my hope to be able to do even better with this particular video and just like with the different types of prisoners who are getting released in this video, I couldn't do like a top 10 or a top five because, well, I don't even know how many I've got listed here, but I know that I've got a bunch and I hope that this is a video you guys are gonna enjoy. I've got all of these skits in my head that I wanna try to incorporate in this video. And sometimes when I overthink a video, it doesn't necessarily come out that great. So we're gonna try to not overthink this and just go ahead and get right into it. But wait, there's more. That was a little bit of a farcity, a little bit of a lie right there. We can't get right into this video just yet. I do need to take a moment. I wanna take a moment. And I don't wanna address a sponsor, but I do wanna take a moment and address and shout out some awesome supporters of After Prison Show. It was just this past weekend where I was just walking down the street and ran into some people who really rocked with After Prison Show. A guy by the name of Josh and his family even got a chance to speak to Josh's father through a FaceTime video call. That was really cool. Josh, a very special shout out to you. Also, to an awesome supporter of After Prison Show who actually is related to a guy that I served time with, a guy by the name of John, a very solid dude, very special shout out to you, John. And also, probably even more importantly, John's nephew, Tyler Rust. Tyler, a very special shout out to you. Thank you for rocking with the After Prison Show, and I'm glad to have you as a part of this. And two other people, a guy by the name of Nathan, who just won a contest on the After Prison Show fan page, creating a new banner. I sent him a $50 Amazon gift card for winning that contest, a little added incentive and bonus, and just a thank you for creating a new banner for our Facebook page. And what I wouldn't realize, and it would be Stephanie Cole, AKA Jersey B, an awesome supporter of After Prison Show, who catches quite a bit of hell from the trolls and just other people who don't like her, but she has rocked with After Prison Show since the very beginning. And she has just helped in so many different ways, especially with that Facebook fan page. But she would let me know that this guy, Nathan, had won this contest, get me his email address so I could send him this gift card. And I would find out that this guy, Nathan, is deaf. And he can't even, you know, he can't hear the videos. And it's Stephanie, AKA Jersey B, who takes the time to try to transcribe these videos for this guy, Nathan. Just crazy. That really hit different when I, heard about that over this past weekend. So to Josh, to Nathan, to Tyler, and to Jersey, a very special shout out to the four of you and to everybody else as well. Maybe I should get back to giving shout outs in these videos. Okay, I've already spent a lot of time on this introduction. Let's go ahead and get into the different types of prisoners you're guaranteed to see getting locked up. Let's go ahead and dive real quickly into this video. That was so Weird. You know, jail and prison sort of like a bus terminal. You're guaranteed to see all different kinds, all different flavors of individuals coming through there. Some are coming for the short term, some are coming for the long term, some are never going home. Some are going to do whatever they can in an effort to try to go home, even if they're not going home or not scheduled to go home anytime soon. They might try to cash in a Cyber Monday type of a deal, a little coupon with the prosecutor and get them a time cut, aka snitching the short of it. And with the fact that jail and prison is sort of like a bus terminal and you're gonna see all different kinds, there's gonna be quite a few that we're gonna be talking about in this video first coming into that jail or prison. Now, if you're somebody who has served time, which quite a few of you who watch these videos have, I'd like you guys to pose down in the comment section, comment down in the comment section, but let us know down in the comment section which kind of prisoner you were first coming into that jail. Maybe you were all of these types of prisoners, or maybe you were a handful of them, or maybe you were none of the type of prisoners that I'm going to mention in this video, and maybe you were the type that I forgot to mention, and you could leave that down below as well. I myself was probably a handful, if not most all of these prisoners at one point or another. And I wanna start with the first type of prisoner you're gonna see getting locked up on that very first day. And that is the normie, is what I wanted to refer to this first guy as. You know, there is such a thing as not too 
blown out of proportion and too crazy. Just that normal guy who's getting locked up because they found either an ounce of the devil's lettuce in his car where in certain states that is still illegal. And that person ends up getting locked up. You know, it's just a normal person. Yeah, they're gonna be scared, but they're gonna try to not look so scared. I mean, this is jail we're talking about. People die here, and oftentimes not because they're getting killed, but just because the medical attention isn't that good. And maybe they had a pre-existing condition. But I wanna say it's probably, if I had to statistically try to break this thing down, it's probably like, you know, maybe half of the people who get locked up are just normal people. The other half are the extremity to the rule. Extremity means your arm. The extreme case, I guess is the best way to put it. You know, the crazy guy or, or whatever. Well, there's so many other different types of prisoners that are going to make this list, but continuing with this normal person, you know, maybe it's somebody who's got like the bad, bad type of charges and they just trying to act normal. Oh yeah, stick. Yeah. I mean, it's my first time, but I, I mean, it, hey, it's jail. Everybody go through it once and they, they think jail like a doorknob. You know, everybody going to get a turn. Wait, Oh, what am I locked up for? What am I locked up? Oh, you want to see my paperwork? God, hey, God, God, you got to, hey, God, God, you get him? He threatened to kill me. I guess the best way that I could put the normie is, you know, whether or not they've ever been locked up before or not, whether they're trying to act like they're scared or not. I mean, obviously you cannot show any kind of fear. So even if you do feel fear, you've got to act like you're not scared or whether or not they're trying to hide the fact that they've got some bad, bad type of charges and just act normal. The reality is you are going to have those guys that come in who just are normies, you know, normal. And of course the normies going to hear the same thing that a lot of other prisoners are going to hear. Boy, them Junies look real sweet for the taking. Hey, anybody got dibs on them Junes right there? Bung. You better let it fly right then and there, that haymaker, boom! Couldn't be this sort of a video talking about guys you're guaranteed to see on the very first day getting locked up bars is what I was trying to go with right there, trying to make that like a little rap lyric. Couldn't be this type of a video if we didn't mention the tough guy. The guy that comes in, oh, he ain't scared of nothing. This dude is a dragon slayer. His breath might be hotter than magma coming out of the earth. His breath could be, I don't know, the tough guy. He might beat you with them DBs, bing, bing, bing. And again, those DBs are your beaters. We're not talking about whipping up in no bowl, neither. But he's either gonna beat you with them DBs or he can beat you with the breath. I don't know why I tried to tie stinky breath to the tough guy, because I think I was just trying to be funny right there. But you're gonna have that tough guy, that alpha male who comes in, yo, I'm not worried about this. I'm not worried about this at all, man. You know what I was going through out there? I was in the concrete jungle for real. Lockdown. Some guys get locked up and they really are those tough guys. Just by the muscles alone, they could look like they're bulletproof. But you gotta keep this in mind and lest you never forget this. Just because a guy looks like he can bench press the entire cell block, don't mean he really built like that. I have seen the biggest guys get knocked out by the littlest dudes. But then again, some of them big dudes, they really are built like that. They like a UFC WWE wrestler in there. And they will fold you up like a piece of lawn equipment. Shout out to that mowing vac I just got. Boy, that's going to make cleaning up leaves a breeze. That might actually be a little slogan for my lawn care service. You're definitely going to have the tough guy coming up in the cell block, getting locked up on that very first day, talking a little bit of smack to the guards, but he ain't going to disrespect nothing because he know his place. He's probably been locked up a time or two. I hate the stereotype. And when he's coming through that cell block or that housing unit front door or sally port, you're going to have the normies, like how I used to be for a good majority of my time, SMHing, shaking my head like, damn. Yo, I know this dude about to be Stupid annoying. First thing he about to do as soon as he walked through the cell block door is snatch up that TV remote. The TV remote's like the crown to the kingdom. When you got that, you run the show. You could die behind that TV remote. No, he's about to put that TV on dance, moms. Cause he's super suspect. Yo, yeah, I'm watching it for the mamas though. For the mamas. Are you now? And you ain't got but three options when you got that tough guy walking through that cell block door. You're either gonna fight him you're either going to respect them or you're going to pass a piece of paperwork on them. Fold that note up, lick that envelope, seal that money, and slide that joint right up underneath the, the guard booth. Guard. Hey. 
I just sent you a Valentine's Day card. Yeah, open it up, open it up. Tank and Dookie drawers threatened to kill a, a member of the correctional staff. <coughs> On the intercom now. <coughs> Tank and Dookie drawers, pack your stuff. <coughs> pack your stuff. Tank and Dookie drawers, pack your stuff. You're not, you're not going home, you're going, you're going to the hole. I've got notes on this video and with the notes, I'll outline like a name of a certain type of a prisoner, like the normie. Well, the next one making this list is the victim. And I don't remember what exactly I was going for here with this particular name. Now you've got the guy that's gonna come in there and, and play the victim role. Super emo, man, I can't believe, man, hey, yo, she put charges on me. She told me she was my soulmate, she put charges on me. She said I could borrow the car. I mean, it was two months ago, but still she said I could borrow it then. I just ain't had enough time to put gas in it and get it back to her. Man, I can never get no mail. Yo, they ever gonna call my name for VI? Are they ever gonna call my name? Hey, God, at least just say my name. Say my name, say my name. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm, what was I going for with the victim? But you're gonna have those type of guys. Super annoying, they come in here bitching and complaining about everything. Yo, I got too much, man, I got too much time left to do, yo. I ain't trying to do all this time. 30 days, 30 days. You know how much stuff can change in 30 days? Dear guard, about my cellmate, the victim. It's either him or me. Make your move, officer. Make your move. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the victim one because I think I've got some other ones that could potentially tie into the victim one and Again, I don't really remember what I was going for there, but if you've got any more insight into what a victim type of prisoner could be like, comment down below. That guy first getting locked up on day number one, the victim. And a perfect example is this next prisoner, which might as well be the victim type of prisoner, but I separated these. You're definitely gonna have that guy coming up in there talking about, I didn't do nothing. It wasn't me, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Another offset of the victim type of a prisoner falls under the same umbrella type of category, but this guy is gonna adamantly, vehemently, adamantly, vehemently deny that it was him, even though they've got him on CCTV walking into that 7-Eleven, pointing that stick at the cashier, claiming that that's a sawed off pump shotgun and demanding the $20 that they keep in the till. But you don't get high. You didn't do nothing and you don't get high. I'm not buying it. I am not, not today I'm not, not on Cyber Monday. Hey, go ahead and leave a like on this video. And also, you know, if you're new here, consider subscribing. My name's Joe Guerrero, I'm a prison professional. And I'm pretty funny as well. At least I fancy myself as such. But again, leave a like. It's a small ask, it, it really is. The next type of prisoner you're guaranteed to see on that first day is the celebrity. Hands down, you're gonna see this guy. This is the guy that when he comes into that sally port, when the police are bringing him into the jail, he gets the standing ovation from the officers. <laughs> bravo, bravo, bravo. You lasted three weeks out there. We knew you'd be back. Ironically enough, I myself have been that celebrity prisoner. Nothing to be proud of, actually quite shameful. When you're getting locked up so many times that the, the officers know you. And I guess that that could be a good thing or maybe perceived as a bad thing. You could be perceived as a snitch immediately. Yo, why the guards know this dude? But you're definitely gonna have those celebrity prisoners. Those guys who have definitely been Jenny from the block. I'm just, I'm just Jenny from the block. Is that how that song goes? They've been in here a time or two, their name's still etched on the bunk somewhere, which they say is a horrible omen. If you ever get locked up, never say that Tank, AKA Little Dookie Drawers was ever here. Because I don't know if you guys have ever heard me talk about this, but that's actually one of the worst things you can ever do while locked up, aside from snitching. But you never wanna write your name, etch your name, stencil your name, draw your name on any walls, bunks, toilets, showers, of any type of an institution. Because they say that if you do, it's almost like saying Beetlejuice three times, don't do it. They say that if you do, history is bound to repeat itself and you're gonna end up going back to see your name still there. I have probably done that. I can't honestly say that I have, but I remember I wrote Jay Paradise, which was my rap alias way back in the day. 
Uh, Jay Paradise. Hey, yo, it's Jay Paradise. Always gambling. Shaking shit like a paradise. I let my n hang like a paradise. Uh. Yeah, I wrote Jay Paradise on the wall one time. I think somebody told on me and I got a charge for that. And I was trying to explain to the guard, yo, you can't tell me nothing, officer. I'm gonna go home and be the next Eminem except the convict version of Eminem. The celebrity prisoner, we got so far off topic. The guy that everybody knows, whispers about, yo, that's Tank, AKA little Dookie Drawers right there. You know who that is? In the street, hey, that dude was moving a big eight every two days. But yeah, now, I mean, now he can't make commissary. Won't nobody even pick up the phone for him? The celebrity. Dude walk around like he jeezy up in there. <laughs> but he ain't eating no noodles with the cheesy because he can't make commissary. Usually the celebrity does pretty well locked up. Everybody knows him. You know, I've heard, and I haven't seen this, but I've heard, you know, this one time the celebrity prisoner came through the doors and they didn't have nothing else to write on except for a pair of drawers. And dudes were running up to this dude asking for his autograph. Yo, that's tank little dookie drawers right there. Sign my drawers. Throwing drawers at his feet like he R. Kelly back in the day. The R. Kelly back in the day, before anybody really knew what R. Kelly was doing. That R. Kelly. Another umbrella offset of the celebrity. You're going to have the OG. The OG. Another guy, everybody's going to know him. Might be a tough guy. You know, he's going he's gonna to wear a bunch of different hats. The OG will. Tough guy. Works out all the time. Can do a thousand straight push-ups. Will extort your commissary or <laughs> you're just going to give it to him. Definitely going to have the OG. You can't tell this dude nothing. Hey, yo, stick man. Up in my cell? Hey, welcome to my cell. W w what you mean, this is your cell now? Oh, I gotta sleep on the floor? Oh, your little dookie drawers. Shit, take my bunk. Definitely gonna have the OG on day number one. Next prisoner you're guaranteed to see on day number one. This could have been the celebrity, but I wanted to make some clear distinctions between the two here. And this is the news guy, the guy that you see on the news. And when I think back to this type of a prisoner, I mean, Google was this type of a prisoner. There was this young kid who may or may not have been crazy. I, I don't know. But uh, this other young kid who was a news guy, a guy that you see on the news prior to him coming in there on day number one. And this guy had some really bad charges. Robbing an elderly woman at an ATM machine, putting her in the trunk of the car, and then even worse. And the guards... You know, they could have put this guy in PC. They didn't put this guy in PC. They put him in population. And I mean, as soon as they just shut the door, this dude got his ass beat. He was right across the hall from where I was being housed at. We could see this through the windows. He was the news guy for real, begging for his life. And it was crazy to watch this. He got what he deserved. Absolutely got what he deserved. Guards were laughing at him. It's crazy. In more cases than not, you definitely don't want to be the guy, the news guy. You don't want to be the guy that's being seen on the news prior to getting locked up on day number one because that's either going to be because you've done something horrible and heinous, some sort of a high-profile crime, something that the snitch prisoners could most certainly jump on and try to get a time cut from. Being on the news definitely is it's not a good thing. You don't want to be that guy. But again, that is an offset under the umbrella of the celebrity type of a prisoner. That was pretty dark and grimace right there. Let's go ahead and lighten it up a little bit with the shock and awe guy. The guy that's just shocked and amazed by everything on day one. Yo, oh, yo, you can order Snicker Bars up in here. Yo, oh, I didn't even have to order one. Somebody left a Snickers on my pillow. Oh, boy, jail is sweet. Yo, it now hurts when I sit down. Boy, I shouldn't have ate that Snickers bar. Wow. I don't know why I haven't done a TED Talk. I mean, I be bodying this stuff. Forgive me. All egos aside right there, I was really feeling that last skit. You're definitely going to have the shock and all guy on day number one. This is usually going to be a prisoner who's never been locked up before. You know, just amazed by everything. Not really scared. Maybe too dumb to be scared. You know, just like, wow, this is so cool. Like, wait till I get out and I can tell all my friends where I've been. Jail and prison, as if I need to reiterate or emphasize this at all, it's not anywhere that you want to be. However... You're going to have guys who are absolutely blown away by it. And you know what? I'm a perfect example of that now that I think about it. The first time that I got to prison, 
I was, I mean, this is a revelation I just had. I was the shock and all guy because I said, after a couple of days of being there, yo, if I'd have known prison was this sweet, I'd have been here a long time ago. One of the stupidest things that I've ever said in my life, but I said it. I'm surprised they didn't take everything from me. They should have snatched my shoes right off of my body saying something that dumb. But they didn't because that first time, this prison was super soft. Second time, this joint was Beirut. Pretty, pretty rough. Next guy that you're gonna have on day number one, you, you can't do any video about prison unless you mention this type of a prisoner, the snitch. Or the guy that you don't even know who's a snitch because he's undercover. A prisoner I like to refer to as the 60 days in type of a prisoner. The guy that comes in acting super cool. Yeah, man, you know, Jeff, it sucks. It sucks, but we gotta get through it. The only way is through, like a wall. That actually makes no sense at all. Where did you go to school at? I mentioned that because there was a guy that I was locked up with who got a tattoo. Prisoners get some of the weirdest shit tattooed on them. I've got never settled for less tattooed across my chest, so I'm no exception. But my buddy ended up getting the only way is through. And again, I used to say, well, what if there's a brick wall? How you, what, you gonna be the Kool-Aid man? Boom! Oh yeah! You ain't getting through that unless you got a tank, little dookie drawers. But that undercover 60 days in type of a prisoner, the guy that you know may or may not seem super cool, may not even be suspected as being a snitch. One thing that you have to keep in mind, uh, this is some advice, free prison consulting advice to anybody who may end up going to prison. Maybe you don't even realize you're gonna go to prison, but you will. Let that sink in. Some of you watching this video may end up in prison. Don't even know it. But if you end up there, because your fate's already been written in the stars, keep this in mind. When you get there, just think to yourself, you don't have to blast this because it'll get you killed, but just keep in mind that everybody you run across in prison could potentially be a snitch. Trust no one like the X-Files. And you know what? Shout out to 60 Days In. I've actually just recently started watching that show and that shit is intense. It's actually really good. I would do some reaction videos to it, but Josh from Lockdown 23 and 1, he's done that, and I don't want to step on his toes. I'm actually pretty real about shit, even though a lot of people don't like me. It might just be because I am so real. There's only two more prisoners you're guaranteed to see on that very first day getting locked up that I want to share with you in this video, and I really want to smoke the boots, no pun intended, of these two, and we're going to start with the first one, which is, what was it? Ah, damn it, how could I forget that? I got my notes right over here as I'm filming this. The Lovebird. <laughs> and you may have actually been that prisoner. I know that I have at one point in time. The guy that gets locked up on that very first day with just a little cartoon hearts popping all around his head. Love struck, love drunk. The guy walking, I mean, so, I mean, passionate about his significant other out there. My girl, God, we're giving, we're giving air hugs. Oh God, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I got a little carried away with that right there. The love struck guy who comes in and just knows that his girl is going to ride no matter what. And maybe he ain't never even been through this before. Yo, my girl, me and my girl, we've been together for four weeks. Four weeks. I got 40 years, but we've been together for four weeks. She said she going to ride. It ain't nothing but a meatball. That ain't no, that ain't nothing. That joint going to go by. We're going to count it down in decades. It's only four decades. That girl don't last four hours before you're crying. I mean, bowling. <laughs> Up in the shower trying to hide them tears and them Super loud sobs over the over the the noise of the the water just raining down hard water <laughs> cutting through you like a nail gun. Sometimes them showers will be like love struck. Ain't no way to come into a place like jail or prison. And as a matter of fact, if you've got a relationship prior to getting locked up, if you know you're getting locked up, you might as well just nip that in the Junes immediately. Cut it out like Full House back in the day. Yeah, because she ain't going to stick around. I hate to break it to you, stick man. <laughs> I know she talk. She ain't talk. 
she, she, what you need, a defibrillator? She told me. Well, you beatboxing over here. It don't matter what she told you. She's telling the other guy right now. You may not be familiar with, but you're going to soon be very familiar with who exactly is Jody number 10, the love struck guy. Love will carry us through. And if you've been through this before, shame on you. Fool me once, or how that saying goes, don't be the love struck guy on day number one. That could lead to a padded medical isolation cell, 24 hour surveillance as well. And I'll be damned if I haven't been that guy as well. Crazy story, I'll never forget. I was smoking crack, I was 18 years old. I wasn't worth the dirt on the ground uh, at that time in my life. Get locked up, got this girl, I got a robbery charge, whoo, boy. Yeah, she told me she was gonna ride. She ain't never been with nobody like me, never been with nobody who got locked up before. Hell, I'd barely ever been anybody who got locked up before, but I believed in love. Not only did she leave me, right during Christmas time, oh my God, this was traumatic, traumatic. She left me right during Christmas time after I signed over my vehicle to her crack smoking parents. Yeah, they manipulated me into that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm talking to her parents on the phone when I'm talking to her. Yeah, she said, yeah, she said, she said she gonna be with you. Can you sign over that vehicle? Yo, we got one. Go ahead and call little Dookie Drawers. We about to get us an eight ball right now. As Soon as I signed over the vehicle, she was gone. Oh God, broke me down. I'm, <laughs> I'm all to pieces. But you know what? She did me a solid, you know? As soon as she left me, they called my name probably about an hour later. And I was like, yo, I knew she would be back. I mean, it's right at Christmas time. So we're getting these Christmas visits. And I'm just convinced I'm going to visitation. I knew it, I knew she couldn't go, I knew it. But they told me to pack my stuff and I didn't understand this. Maybe I had made bond. I did have a bond during the time. I knew she was gonna bond me out love. Yo, they put me in that pad, and it wasn't a padded cell. It was a butt ball naked turtle suit cell because she called the jail and told them I was gonna probably harm myself. Great, great girl, great girl. Footnote to that as well. They brought the Beyond Scared Straight kids in. I'm butt ball naked in a freaking cell, covering myself up and got little kids screaming at me. I'm the one who's crying. Yeah, that, that, that stuff they show you on TV is not how it really goes down. I was traumatized, scared to death of them kids. Guard, you better not open that door up. Don't let them in the cell. <laughs> okay, we're on the last one and I've got to knock this one out of the park. The last prisoner that I could think of that you're going to see on the very first day is your preacher man. Now, Couple of different scenarios play into this. I wanted to call this one the change up, almost like a fastball or a slider, sort of like a pitch. But we're gonna go with the preacher man and an offset of that is somebody who could change up. You gotta think about this. You're gonna have guys who, and I've done this, so I'm not sitting here shaming. I've definitely been this guy. You're gonna have guys who come in on day number one with that Bible. It's almost like that Bible just magically appears in their hand. As soon as they come through that Sally Port door, they're no longer scratching and looking for an eight ball or a tink or a tint or anything like that. As soon as they walk through that Sally, the anointed one. I mean, we are transform. We have given our life to Christ, and I'm not making fun of any type of religion at all. I'm just simply saying these are the type of prisoners you're guaranteed to see, and they're going to be trying to baptize you in that steel commode. Lay back, child of God. You ever gotten baptized in a jailhouse toilet stall? And what's crazy about this is the guys who come in on day number one, holier than thou, very few, I mean, we're talking maybe like two, maybe three at the very most, three. I'm gonna go with three. Three guys that I know from the time that I've served who have come home from prison and are still very much about that life. To a, one of them's a preacher. The other one is very involved in the church, in, in the music program at a local church and in music just in general. And the other one is just a super solid dude who was very religious while locked up, was a huge part of the church in prison, and has come home and is living a very productive life. Surprisingly, I've never had a chance to have this guy on After Prison Show. Was a good friend of mine while locked up. This guy actually helped me get the best job that I had prior to where I'm at now, doing the concrete pouring 
job that I had. But three people have been about that life when I have met millions, not really millions, but at least hundreds of do, and I've been one myself who are just on that Bible. I mean, as soon as they come through that, that Sally Port door, it's like, <laughs> Lord, Lord Jesus, he is saved. Yeah. You'll have guys like that. This video turned out to be a hell of a lot longer than I intended it to be, but I truly hope that this was a video you guys enjoyed. If it was, please leave a like and a comment on this, letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace.